Welcome to Pokemon Infinite Fusion, the fan-made game where you can fuse any two Pokemon together, creating new and amazing creatures. This game has over 170,000 possible combinations, as well as over 60,000 custom sprites made by the community. My name's QJ Cosmic, and in this run, we'll be using only Cosmic-themed fusion. This means fusions that have some sort of connection to space and the cosmos. Before we jump in, remember to comment what run you'd like to see next, and smash the like button to let me know you enjoyed this video. I think we could hit 3,286 likes. Also, make sure to stick around to the end so you don't miss some of the coolest fusions in this game. As all Pokemon games do, we started by naming our rival. For some reason, I chose the name Billy, and it was time to choose our starters. Now, a little information for how we're going to guarantee that we stick to cosmic fusions. For this run, I set our starter to be Clefairy, as it has a ton of space-themed fusions. And after every gym, we're going to spin this wheel, to add one of these space themed Pokemon to the team. This way we get to see a ton of cool and unique fusions and by the end we'll be using whatever cool cosmic fusions we can find. Our rival somehow started with a double pincer fusion which made Mega Pincher. Luckily its stats were no different than its normal form so we were able to win our first battle. We then ran an errand for Professor Oak by running to the nearest Pokemart and then grabbing his satchel that had been delivered. After returning it to him he gave us a Pokedex and some Pokemon balls which meant it was time to begin our journey. Since this run is not going to be a Nuzlocke, we caught every Pokemon we could find, including this Kecleon, a Yanma, and even this Graveler Mistrevious fusion, among many others. Since Brock was the first gym leader, and he only had two Pokemon to start, I wanted to make sure it was at least somewhat fair, so we started by spinning the wheel, receiving our first new addition to the team, Starmie. I used this Starmie to fuse with a Mudkip and found that he made this adorable little purple Mudkip with a cute little cosmic tail, but I ended up really loving this coughing fusion instead with its clouds kind of surrounding it, this gorgeous little star. Clefairy and Oddish also made this cute little cosmic plant, but I decided to go with this Mareep fusion instead as I am a sucker for Mareep and its evolution line. It's one of my favorite Pokemon. In case you haven't noticed, this run is also randomized. Both the gyms, Train leaders and even wild encounters are all randomized, which means we're going to be running into things like this Empoleon and even this Charizard we found in the forest. I'll grab that for later. While making our way to Pewter City and fighting some random trainers in the forest, we ran into one that had this amazing Zapdos and Luxray fusion. And after a tough fight, we were able to beat it with our Clefairy Marie fusion. We had finally made it to Pewter City and decided to take a look around. But before we do that, let's hear a quick word from today's video sponsor. Sticking around really helps to support the channel. Today's video sponsor, Raid Shadow Legends. Today we have a special guest from the game to introduce an in-game feature. Professor Death Knight here with a lesson about Live Arena, the new PvP mode where you can fight against other players in real time. <gasps> Sounds terrifying? Well, so's going to the dentist. You should still do it. Live Arena has a draft feature where you can pick and ban champions to fight for you. <laughs> Teamwork! When you win matches, you'll get Live Arena crests towards unlocking special area bonuses, or so I hear. I'm too afraid to try any of this out. All right, class. Any questions? So, Professor Death Knight, you must be excited that some of the heroes are banned from the Live Arena, right? I I wish everybody could play. Back in school, I would always get picked last. This is just like when someone pointed at me and said, you can't even play and your bones look weird. But you know, rules are rules. So uh, what would your theme music be, Mr. Professor Bones, sir? It's gotta be upbeat, high tempo. Like a song that really pumps up the jam. Or one that Get you jiggy with it. Sorry, you know I'm like a thousand years old, right? Nah, I was thinking more along the lines of spooky, scary, since you're a skeleton, but... I hope you use this knowledge you've gained here today about Live Arena to head off and do battle live. Make this whole dead bones professor proud, folks. Class dismissed. Do we have a bell? Thank you, Mr. Death Knight. And just so you guys are aware, Raid is adding some of the new characters from their series, Call of the Arbiter, as in-game champions. The first one being Artak, who's going to be available to everyone for free. Just log into Raid for seven days between now and July 24th. Don't miss out on any of these cool champions, the free gear and events going on in game by clicking the link in the bio or scanning the QR code on screen. New players will also get this awesome starter pack. So 
what are you waiting for? I'll see you in the arena. Will it be as a friend or as a foe? After we had finished exploring the town, I decided to head straight for Brock's gym. Upon arrival, we find out that it is a ground type gym, so we shouldn't have too many issues considering we already have a water type. We easily made it through the gym trainers and it was time to fight Brock. Gym leaders in this game only allow you to use as many Pokemon as they do, so luckily this just meant two. We started the battle and unfortunately Brock's first Pokemon was a Kingdra Garchomp fusion, which meant it definitely had Dragon Rage. In case you're unaware, Dragon Rage is a move that always does 40 damage, so it's crazy powerful in the early game. He was able to quickly knock out our first Pokemon. Luckily, our Clefairy Marip Fusion was able to take it down with a combination of Sing and Double Slaps, but unfortunately his second Pokemon, this adorable Cubone Shuppet Fusion, took us out quickly with a Ground-type move. Our second attempt went a lot better as we led with Marip and managed to put his King Chomp to sleep, and after several Double Slaps, it fell. We were then immediately knocked out by his Cupid, but our Starmie Fusion made short work of it after with Water Gun, winning our first Gym Badge. With the Gym Badge in hand, it was time to spin the wheel. This time, we were able to add a Clefable to the team. Clefable and Charizard made this funny looking dragon, but an awesome tail. Poliwhirl looked incredible, and its stomach swirl turned into like this space void. Absolutely loved how Tentacool had stars in the little orbs on its head, but I absolutely could not ignore the fact that Butterfree and Clefable made this amazing fusion. Just wait until later, Butterfree shows us that it makes some of the coolest cosmic fusions in this run, hands down. After beating up some random trainers with their goofy fusions like this Chinchino Latios fusion, as well as this dorky Ninetales Marstomp fusion, Look at his face. We made our way onward where we ran into a nurse who was in trouble. As any good hero does, we stopped to see what we could do to help. It turns out that some guys had been stealing Pokemon and beating up trainers inside the nearby cave. So we went in to investigate and found that it was Team Rocket who was causing all these issues. We reported this to Brock and he gave us the HM for Rock Smash and we made our way forward to find out what they were doing and to put a stop to it. While traveling through the cave, we ran into a lot of different Pokemon and battled some Team Rocket grunts. We even fought this adorable but kind of freaky Rattata fusion. I don't know, is this scary or cute? Let me know in the comments below. On our way, our Clefairy Mareep fusion evolved into its flaffy form, and after beating the final grunt with her dopey looking woo eel? Wheel? I don't know. We found the source of all of this mischief. Team Rocket was trying to perform some sort of triple fusion experiment using the moonstones from the cave, but for some reason, after defeating the scientists they had captured for the plan, the machine malfunctioned, there was a loud explosion, and they ran off with the moonstones they had collected. With no further clues as to where they went or what they were going to do next, there was nothing left to do but head forward to get our next gym badge. After arriving in Cerulean City, we explored the area and went north to see what we could find past Nugget Bridge. It was there that Billy came back to fight us once again. I should mention that near the end of the cave, my game did get corrupted and I had to start a new save. I used some tools to make sure we had the exact same Pokemon in our box and on our team at this point. The only thing that was changed is our rival's starter Pokemon. Instead of a Pinsir, it was now an Electabuzz Poliwrath fusion. I thought we'd be okay fighting him at this point, but his levels were much higher than my team's, and his first Pokemon was a Palkia Infernape fusion. It took over seven attempts, and we had still not beaten our rival. Eventually, our Pokemon were roughly the same level as Billy's, or I guess high enough to at least take on his legendary fusion. Our Flaffy fusion was able to knock out his Infernape with Thundershock, and then Wake Up Slap made quick work of his Licky Ursa. That is a long tongue. We managed to put his starter to sleep using Sing, but unfortunately it quickly woke up and used Swift to knock us out. It was then that we sent out our Butterfree Fusion and used Minimize and Sleep Powder a few times, allowing us to finish his starter off with Confusion. Glue Bowl then came out and was unable to hit us due to our Minimize, and Silver Wind made fast work of it, finally defeating our rival and allowing us to continue on through Nugget Bridge. Some of the fusions we saw here were awesome, like this double 
double wheezing and even a buff victory bell. I think we might have to do a buff fusions only run at some point. Eventually we ran into Bill in his lab doing some research on Pokemon and human fusions. We had arrived just in time to watch himself fuse with a Rhydon, which is a criminally underrated Pokemon by the way. It seemed he didn't have any way of unfusing himself due to his now massive Rhydon fingers, so we of course lended him a hand quite literally, and helped him unfuse. As a gift of gratitude, he gave us a ticket to the SS Anne. Though it seemed like he wasn't too worried about parting ways with it. Oh well, I'm not gonna turn down a free cruise. After having explored everything around Cerulean City, we decided to go in and face Misty for the second gym badge. Misty was now using Ghost-type Pokemon, so after defeating this amazing Charizard Litwick fusion, we made it to Misty. She again was only letting us use two Pokemon. We quickly put her Ghost-type Eevee Evolution to sleep with Butterfree and then poisoned it with Sludge from Starmie. After it fainted from Water Gun, Misty sent out Duba, the little ghost bug Pokemon, who quickly was poisoned and fell to Sludge soon after. With Misty defeated, we received our second badge. With a new badge in hand, it was time to roll the wheel once again. Drum roll, please. And we get another Clefairy. I promise we will get some of these other Pokemon soon, and it will be worth the wait. But for the time being, more fusions. Ponita and Clefairy made this adorable fusion that I absolutely loved. Those flaming stars on its back were perfect. Veneri also made this adorable fusion in its own right as well. When we mixed Magnezone and Clefairy, it turned into a little UFO, which I thought was super unique and super clever. But I decided to go with this Clefairy and Gyarados instead because it was made completely out of moons. We then fused Starmie with Tentacruel and its entire body turned into this cosmic mess of tentacles which I absolutely loved. With these two new fusions on the team it was time to head south. When we arrived in Vermilion City I didn't waste a second we ran straight to the SSN to enjoy our cruise. I would say the cruise was nice and relaxing but unfortunately there was quite a lot of trainers and sailors that wanted to battle so it was pretty hectic. We defeated this cool looking Shuckle Fusion as well as this Voltor Golduck Fusion, I think. I'm not sure if I like this one, he's giving me quite the bombastic side eye. I will say though, Chinchino definitely made up for its previous goofy fusion in the run by fusing with this Gallade. Look at how cool this majestic knight is. After listening to some smooth jazz in the lounge, we went to pay the captain a visit and ran into our rival Billy once again. Our Gyarados fusion quickly took out his Solaby and then fell to his starter. Ponita then tried, but failed to avenge him, as did Butterfree. Luckily, Starcruel was here to save the day. With a combination of Recover, Bubble Beam, and Acid Spray, he managed to knock out his starter, this Shinx Fusion, yeah, I'm not gonna say that name, and even finished off his last Pokemon, Loplia, which was easy. Thank you, Starcruel. The captain was feeling kinda sick, and after giving him a back rub like he's never had before, I charged him $800 and he gave me the HM cut as a tip. What? I give a good massage. A man's gotta charge for that kind of service. We then made our way to surge the next gym leader who just happened to be a dragon type trainer. Remember what I said about Dragon Rage earlier? Yeah, this wouldn't be an easy fight. Surge's first Pokemon was a Dragonair Crocodile Fusion, and after using Minimize with our Gyarados, we were able to knock it out with Wake Up Slap. He then sent out a Zekrom Curum Fusion, and easily knocked us out with Thunderbolt. Our Butterfree tried to avoid his attacks the best it could by using Minimize and Sleep Powder, and we managed to knock it out with Psybeam somehow. His final Pokemon was another Curum Fusion, but this time with Giratina. Unfortunately, it woke up from sleep and knocked us out with Ice Beam, and then it got an Omni Boost from Ancient Power and finished us off with Shadow Sneak. It wasn't quite as one-sided as I thought it would be, but it was still a loss. On our second attempt, we used a lot more minimizes with Gyarados, and then with Wake Up Slap, we knocked out his first Pokemon. Gyarados then managed to knock out his Kirom Zekrom fusion with Disarming Voice because it was dodging all the attacks. Our Butterfree fusion was then able to come in, set up some Minimize, and then with the assist of Sleep Powder, it knocked out his final Pokemon with Psybeam, winning our third gym badge, which of course meant time to spin the wheel. Finally, we get Palkia, which meant it was time for some legendary fusions. Mamoswine and Palkia looked amazing, and I absolutely love the cool little mask they gave it, and the tusks are gorgeous. Spiritomb didn't look bad at all, but I absolutely fell in love with this Ursaring fusion. It 
it becomes a constellation, which I think is so creative. We then fused Grimer with Clefable, and while cute, I decided I liked this Golem with Clefable better, as it becomes its own little solar system. Marowak and Clefable was also a good one, but we ended up not using it. I also evolved our Clefairy Gyarados fusion, so it became a Clefable Gyarados fusion, and it looked insane. Instead of just moons, it was a sun surrounded by planets. So cool. We headed back to Cerulean City and then headed east towards the next town. On our way, we fought a ton of cool Pokemon like the Swampert Fusion and even this amazing Magma Ninetales Fusion. We eventually made our way through this dark cave where we fought a Regigigas Hone Edge and even the stunning Gliscor Kyogre Fusion. Eventually, we made it to Lavender Town where we went in to explore the Pokemon Tower. There, Billy was waiting for us to challenge once again, but unfortunately, his team was nothing really exciting this time, so... Boom! Bam! Bada bop! Boom! Pow! After defeating the rival, we saw that Mr. Fuji was being taken to the top of the tower by Team Rocket. Unfortunately, the tower was full of haunted spirits, so without a silph scope, we were unable to proceed, which meant we might as well head on to the fourth gym in Celadon City. When we went to fight Erica, the fourth gym leader, we ran into her outside the gym, and after telling her what had happened at the Pokemon Tower, she requested that we help her stop Team Rocket, who had taken up refuge in her city's sewers. I feel like that might have been a problem for you to solve before they established a base underneath your city, but I'm no gym leader, so what do I know? With Erica at our side and her Duskull Werelord fusion fighting alongside us, we blasted through this derpy looking duo. We made it through these annoying conveyor puzzles and finally got to Giovanni. He had already defeated Erica, so it was up to us to show him who was boss. His first fusion was a Dunsparce Raikou fusion, which unfortunately quickly took out our Golem fusion, mainly because I was messing around using Metronome. Hey, a hero has to have fun every once in a while. We switched into our Ponita fusion and Giovanni switched into this cursed looking Ambipom Sloking fusion. Our Gyarados then came in and finished it off with Aqua Tail and Wake Up Slap. It was then knocked out by the Raikou and our Constellation then came out and finished him off. Embarrassingly, it then fell to a Pidgey Blossom fusion. Luckily, instead of attacking our Ponita, it whirlwind and sent in our Starry Tentacruel to finish him off, defeating Giovanni. Erica then invited us to come challenge her gym and we found a Silphscope just handily lying around before heading back to her. Erica was using water type Pokemon this time and her first Pokemon was an Octillery Weezing which we almost knocked out until it self-destructed and barely failed to take us out. We then fell to her Chinra but Powering had no trouble taking it out with Spatial Rend. Her Marotops was then an easy final target for Spatial Rend proving that our constellation was unstoppable. Four gym badges to go but before this we headed back to the Pokemon Tower to save Mr- Ah! You thought I forgot to spin the wheel! Well, at this point I decided I would add Jirachi to the team as it was the last one with cosmic fusions that we didn't have, and unfortunately there weren't really any Deoxys fusions on this run. Starmie and Gliscor looked great. Jirachi made Arbok look absolutely adorable. That's a snake I would have as a pet. Ninetales also looked absolutely gorgeous with its awesome cosmic tails. Parasect didn't look half bad and I loved the big cartoony stars on its back. Lugia was definitely the star of the show, dad jokes. The colors this artist chose were amazing. Melodic and Clefable looked adorable and Hydreigon was surprisingly good. Snorlax looked like it was incredibly uncomfortable as its stomach was turned into a black black hole, and Spiritum looked 10 times cooler with its new color palette and more detailed stars. I ended up keeping this Dark Ride Clefable fusion on the team instead because I thought its pose was awesome, and it's holding a moon, which is just so cool. With that, our new team was ready to go, and we were headed to the Pokemon Tower to save Mr. Fuji. Once we got there, he told us that Team Rocket had no more need for him, so they left him where he was, and he was perfectly fine. He gave us a Poke Flute as a parting gift for our efforts, and we were on our way. As we headed south onto the next city for our fifth gym badge, we ran into a sleeping Snorlax blocking the path. We played the flute Mr. Fuji had given us, and after clearing it out of the way, a woman named Janine thanked us for helping her on our journey, as she was now able to get back to her hometown. She invited us to come visit and told us that her father was the gym leader and that we should challenge him. So we went to do exactly that. After making our way to the next city, we went in to challenge Koga, the normal type gym leader. Koga led with a Porygon Unknown fusion, and 
Starry Gliscor was able to easily take it out with Sky Uppercut after setting up some sword stances. Well, I guess I shouldn't say easy as it only had 12 HP. Luckily, it was able to knock out the next two Baneri fusions with ease, not missing either Sky Uppercut. Unfortunately, it then fell to Koga's behemoth of a Blissey. This wall of a Pokemon managed to stall out my entire team by either knocking one out with Earthquake or eventually just stalling out Pokemon like our Lugia fusion until it had to struggle. This insanely thick Pokemon with Groudon and Blissey being fused is just unfair altogether, especially with moves like Rest. On our second attempt, I decided to lead with our Gyarados fusion and use Minimize a few times before knocking out his first Pokemon with Aqua Tail. We then used Wake Up Slap to obliterate Koga's Blissey Wall thanks to the Minimize allowing us to avoid most of the Earthquakes, finally beating him and earning our fifth gym badge. With five badges in hand, we headed to Saffron City where the sixth gym leader was waiting for us. Unfortunately, when we arrived, we found that the city had been overrun by Team Rocket Grunts. We searched around and found the source of the issue, Silphco. So without any hesitation, we headed straight in to face what lied ahead. We ended up having to fight our way through a ton of grunts that had amazing fusions, like this Miss Magius Dusk Noir fusion, as well as a double Butterfree becoming almost the Gigantamax version of Butterfree. This Salamence and Gallade was also an incredibly cool Dragon Knight, and Kofagrigus and Nidoking became exactly what you would expect of a Pharaoh sitting on his giant throne. After rescuing several people from the building, we made our way to Giovanni, where he had taken the Silco owner hostage. But just before we were able to confront him and end this entire mess, our rival Billy arrived in time to challenge us once again. His first Pokemon, Politongue, went down easily to Lugia's Double Edge. He then sent out his starter, who still hadn't evolved yet, which I thought was interesting. But our Golem Fusion had no problems taking it out with Earthquake. We then messed around a little with Metronome, and eventually we just used Rock Blast to knock out his Tentacle Cocoon. Kuna fusion. Crookrath then came out, which was fairly funny as this was his third Polyrath fusion in his team alone. But eventually our Gyarados was able to take it out with Aquatail, his final Pokemon, this absolutely adorable Pokemon, then got unlucky by getting frozen and then fell to wake up slap. Poor little guy. Our rival now defeated, he joined us after healing our team to face off against Giovanni. Giovanni's Cofatrace fell to Hydro Pump and Earthquake as a combo. The field was completely littered with legendary birds. Blaze Sparse stood no chance surviving an Earthquake, but managed to take us out right before fainting itself. His final two Pokemon, Kiri and Roseth, quickly fell to an X Scissor and Fire Blast, defeating Giovanni once again. Giovanni and his crew fled, claiming they had gotten all they needed and we continued on our gym badge journey. Sabrina was up next with her ghost type Pokemon. Her first Pokemon, Aegeclops, knocked itself out with Curse, and after our Darkrai hit itself in Confusion twice, it was knocked out by Shadow Ball. Her Golduck Drift Bloom Fusion was then pretty thick, and our Gyarados was able to come in and weaken it down, even get a freeze, but was knocked out due to an early thaw. Sabrina then switched out in time for Lugia to hit her Solo Blades with Aeroblast, knocking it out in one hit. Our Lugia then fell to her Jiragar, which was kind of uncomfy to look at. Powering was then able to knock it out with Aqua Tail and finish off her Drift Duck as well, winning us our sixth gym badge first try. With six gym badges in hand, I was extremely motivated to grab ourselves another, so I immediately ran down to Cinnabar Island, found Blaine hiding in the basement of a Pokemon mansion, and sent him back to the gym where we could finally challenge him for our seventh badge. Blaine's dark type Pokemon wouldn't know what hit them. Leading with our Gliscor fusion, we tried to set up Sword Stance so that we could get an easy sweep through his team, and we managed to knock out a Zorark Regigigas fusion, but unfortunately, Houndgong took us out with Foul Play. Power Ring then made easy work with Aurasphere and Blaine sent in his Honchkrow Honedge fusion, which knocked us out. I realized an incredibly obvious weakness in this team, foul play, because this team was just too strong as it also did massive damage to our golem fusion. Luckily our Lugia fusion was able to take it out with Aeroblast and it was a 1v1, our Lugia versus his Dark King. Unfortunately for him, I had type advantage and with Hydro Pump, we had our 7th gym badge. Those were some really cool fusions. 
And speaking of fusions, time for some more. Palkia and Jirachi made this super cool version of Palkia, and I love how its wings are coming out of portals. Deoxys and Palkia made this super cool fusion that had a black hole in its hand, but it was nothing compared to this Charizard fusion that became a cosmic version of Charizard's G-Max form. Super cool and so much detail. Rapidash became the centaur looking Pokemon, while Voltorb, well, I'm not really sure what I'm looking at, but it's super cool. Remember how I said Butterfree has some of the best fusions in the game? Well, take a look at Palkia and Butterfree. This thing is a work of art. This is definitely one of the coolest sprites in the entire game. Deoxys and Jirachi looked pretty cool, and Kyogre absolutely looked adorable, almost like it had streamers coming off its fins. Bisharp and Jirachi was absolutely crazy. I loved the starry armor. Raikou was a cool fusion as well as his lightning turned into a starry night sky, and Azumarill looked like a really pretty easter egg. Typhlosion was one of my favorites as his flames became this cosmic explosion. I love the colors here. Palkia and Ryu Uniclus became their own little solar system, which I absolutely loved. Starmie and Clefable was also a similar fusion, and Lapras was not one of my favorite fusions, but he was just so derpy to look at, I had to add him. Look at that face. I also really loved the Low Punny and Clefable fusion as it became a mega Low Punny, but with planets in its hair as braids. Super fun. Trap Inch looked super cool, and I didn't think it would be this cool, but it's the center of its own galaxy. Roserade also became a superhero looking fusion. It was really hard choosing a new team with all of these amazing fusions, but with this new team, we decided to press forward towards the next gym. That was until we ran into Team Rocket stealing a boat from the harbor. Having found Team Rocket and knowing where they were headed, I decided to chase them through the wild ocean currents. It was time to put a stop to their evil plans. Once we arrived at their location, we found that Giovanni was capturing the legendary Pokemon Moltres. They had already caught Articuno and Zapdos and planned to merge them together into a triple fusion once referenced in the Pokemon manga. Its name, Zap Molkuno. For those of you who are new to the series of fusions, this insane three-headed fusion has three health bars, one for each individual head and gets to attack each time every turn. So unless you outspeed these legendary birds, you have to survive three hits before you get to dish out your own. Though even with this great challenge ahead, I knew our cosmic fusion team could handle it. We sent out our Butterfree fusion and used Spatial Rend on Articuno to weaken it as it was one of the strongest of the three. For some reason, the Zapdos then decided to use Discharge on Moltres, and it did massive damage all to itself. Trap Ants unfortunately was knocked out immediately, but we were able to send in our Typhlosion fusion and use Lava Plume to do massive damage to all three heads, burning the Articuno, and then on second turn, knocking it out. Typhlosion survived quite a few hits and was actually able to knock out the Moltres head as well before going down to Zapdos' Discharge. We then sent in our low punny and tried to use Minimize to set up, but we were knocked out. Luckily, our Reuniclus Fusion was incredibly bulky, and with a couple of Psychics, we knocked out the Zapdos, defeating the Triple Fusion threat and causing Giovanni to give up retreat and head away. Their plans had been foiled and the day had been saved, which meant we could finally get back to what was most important earning gym badges. After heading back to where it all began, we went to challenge the final gym leader who turned out to be Giovanni using fighting type Pokemon. I never really understood why Giovanni was a gym leader, but also the mastermind of the biggest criminal organization in the Pokemon universe. Regardless, it was time to take him out. Or so I thought. His Quagsire Primate Fusion used Stopping Tantrum to knock out our cosmic superhero in one hit, which got me worried about how the rest of the battle would go. Luckily, our Butterfree Fusion was able to set up some quiver dances and then used air slash to knock out every single one of his Pokemon with ease. This Palkia Butterfree fusion is insane. With all of the gym badges now in hand, it was time to face off against the Elite Four and Champion. But on our way there, we ran into our rival Billy for the final time. It was time to show him what our cosmic fusions could do. Our Trap Inch fusion barely fell to his Venomoth, which is understandable as it was a first stage evolution, and I thought it would just look cool. Luckily, our Jirachi fusion 
and was able to come in and use Flamethrower to knock it out. We then finished off his next Pokemon with Flamethrower as well, and his still unevolved starter then caused us some issues with Thunderbolt. After using Minimize, our low punny fusion was able to knock it out with Dizzy Punch, and this sick looking Corsola fusion came in and easily fell to an Earth Power from Reuniclus. This dorky looking Hydreigon Chinchino fusion stood no chance as it couldn't even hit us for some reason, and his final Pokemon, a little Magby Ralts fusion, fell easily, defeating our rival once again. Now I won't bore you with all of the next route and Victory Road, but I did find a Shuckle fusion that looked like it was shiny, so I had to catch it, I unfused it, and unfortunately it was just a normal Shuckle. How dare they make this sprite blue? After finally making it through Victory Road, we got to the Indigo Plateau, and all that was left was to beat the Elite Four and some more fusions. Machamp and Palkia was an amazing fusion that I wanted to save for this final leg of the run. It looks like his Gigantamax form, but it changed to make it custom, and it looks absolutely killer. Executor and Palkia also made this world tree looking thing that had all the planets inside of it, while Smeargle was painting the cosmos. Zoroark's hairdo was an absolute stunning one, and I'm not really sure what this fusion was supposed to be, but it looks pretty cool. Golurk became an entire planet just blasting off by itself, while Mewtwo became one of its megas, but only more powerful. Tentacruel and Jirachi looked like it was made out of space paper, while Moltres and Jirachi became this cosmic flaming phoenix. I had to include this Entei fusion because its face was way too dorky, but it was kind of a cool fusion. Torterra became this amazing space island. Alakazam looked like its mega form, but wiser and more cosmic, and Venusaur got plants that were bedazzled with planets. Here's the final form of the Ampharos Clefable fusion that we were using earlier, and Steelix looked amazing mixed with Clefable. I absolutely love planet fusions, and they never got old. Just like this Ferrothorn fusion wrapped up in all the planets. Also, here's a little happy Gardevoir. Don't you guys get Get any ideas. Here's a quick recap of the team. I kept the Palkia Machamp fusion as it was just too awesome. We also have the Alakazam and Jirachi, Moltres, and we also kept the World Tree Executor, one of my favorite Pokemon and I think he is underrated. We also kept Steelix and Ampharos and with this we had a fairly variety filled team and I liked our chances against the Elite Four. Lorelei was up first with her fairy type Pokemon. This typing I thought would be a little bit of a challenge. Our Palachamp with no guard allowed us to hit hit every single Hydra Pump and take out her Togevi. Unfortunately, this Azumarill fusion likely had huge power and knocked us out with a single cross chop. Cleflex then came in and managed to knock it out using Gyro Ball before being knocked out by her Clefclop Shadow Ball. Geotrace was then able to come in and weaken it down to one HP before fainting, and luckily Jirakazam outsped and was able to knock it out as well as finishing off her Snub Sprout after setting up a Calm Mind. Recover then saved the day as we were able to heal up before using Psychic again, and her final Pokemon fell. Lorelei down, three more to go. Bruno, funny enough, was using Ice-type Pokemon. Quite the arena for Ice-types, huh? Unfortunately, I led with our Grass-type, and he quickly switched out of his Delibird Krabby fusion. We were able to take out his next Delibird fusion with Psyshock before falling to Glavile's Dark Pulse. I sent in Jirakazam, thinking we could outspeed, but unfortunately, we were immediately knocked out with Dark Pulse as well. Bruno then managed to flinch us several times before switching into his Delibird Krabby fusion, and once again, we were barely able to knock it out. This Mamoswine Persian fusion was absolutely amazing, and it managed to wreak havoc on us with Earthquake. Luckily, we were able to feed it with Palchamp's Hydro Pumps, as well as his next Pokemon before falling to Dark Pulse by Glavel once again. This Pokemon is a real menace. Luckily, Geratrace was able to survive a Dark Pulse and finish it off with Flamethrower. Two down, two to go. Agatha, the Grass-type Elite Four member, was next. Geotrace quickly knocked out her Bulbasaur fusion, as well as her next two Pokemon, Doduo and Venusaur. We were then faced with the wisest, softest looking turtle of all time. His name was definitely Ugwe. We switched into our Ampharos fusion, surviving several moon blasts, but unfortunately we got hit in confusion, which allowed Agatha to knock us out. We then sent in our World Tree to finish it off with Psyshock. This freaky looking Chinchino fusion then came in, and we managed to just barely knock it out with Spatial Rend before beating Agatha and moving on to the fourth and final Elite Four member, Lance. 
Lance's Steel Hype Pokemon were going to be tough. Lance led with a Skarmory Air Dactyl Fusion, and our Ampharos was barely able to eventually knock it out before being dropped out of the sky several times. It then fell to his next Pokemon, who was quickly defeated by Cleflex. His amazing looking Scizor Amaldo Fusion then came out and stood no chance against Palachamp's Cross Chops. His Yanmega wielding a sword was then able to knock us out and switched using U-Turn after we set up some Calm Minds. He eventually was able to defeat us, but unfortunately for Lance, we still had Geotrace in the back with Flamethrower. This made the rest of the battle a piece of cake. We had defeated the Elite Four first try, and it was now time to face off against the champion. The battle against the rival started off fairly well as we led with Jirakazam and wasted all of his full restores by using Psychic against his Smeargle Fusion. He then sent out a Spear Trio, which we were quickly knocked out by, but it wasn't ready for a Hydro Pump from Palachamp. His starter had finally evolved and proved to be quite the adversary as it quickly knocked out our Ampharos fusion. We sent in Giratrace to hopefully get some more damage in, but it was knocked out almost immediately, and he decided to keep circle throwing my Pokemon out of the battle and switching us around, which was fine as our world tree was able to get some decent damage off, and Palachamp was able to bring him into red before getting knocked out by Thunderbolt. Clefex then finished him off with Dig and suddenly... A problem arose. A Ninjask fusion. Luckily, we were able to do damage with Gyro Ball, which meant it didn't have Wonder Guard. He then switched into his Jinx Meganium fusion, and we were barely unable to knock it out before we were knocked out by his Mr. Inja. Our second battle started out the same way by using Jirakazam to set up Calm Mind and Psychic. We were then knocked out by Earthquake from his Spirit Trio, but Palacham finished it off with Hydro Pump. I then switched into our Ampharos fusion, hoping that we'd be able to dodge enough attacks with Minimize to do decent damage. Unfortunately, he kept hitting us with Thunderbolts, and with as thick as he is, paired with Leftovers, we were just not doing enough damage. Eventually, Ampharos was knocked out, and we sent in Cleflex to use Dig and Chip Away at him. Before we could finish it off, he sent in Mr. Inja, who was a cool fusion, but was quickly knocked out by Crunch, and then his starter came back in to fall to another Dig. Cleflex was coming in clutch. We then were able to knock out his Meganium and Jinx fusion with Gyro Ball, surviving on 7 HP before his Blastoise Venomoth finally knocked us out. Palachamp then came in and did decent damage before being knocked out, which allowed our Executor World Tree to finish it off with Psyshock, winning the battle, beating the champion, and becoming one ourselves. And with that, we had beaten Pokemon Infinite Fusion using only Cosmic Fusions. If you enjoyed the video, make sure you subscribe and comment down below your favorite fusion from the run. I think these were some of the coolest fusions that we've seen in any run so far. Make sure to go and check out our other videos as there are so many cool fusions you have yet to see and I will see you next time. Peace.